Hello guys. In this video I'm going to be building this Spitfire Mark 9 from Edward in 148th scale. I'm going to be marvelling at the cockpit detail. I'm going to be cursing at the decals. I'm going to be undoing some of my work. And then I'm going to be producing a Spitfire in a nice Malta scheme. So as you can see this is the weekend edition of this kit. But despite this we get four marking options. Two of them in the um, dark grey and dark green. One of them in the tropical uh, stone and uh, brown colour. I forget the name of the colours. And one of them, probably the most controversial one, in a deep Mediterranean blue, dark Mediterranean blue, which is a Malta scheme. And that's the one I'm going to be building in this video. So the camouflage of Spitfires in Malta is quite a... Um, debated topic. I think it's clear that at some point some blue paint of some type was used on some Spitfires going to Malta. Um, the exact nature of that paint, uh, whether it covered the entire aircraft, or the entire upper side should I say, or whether it covered only one of the two camouflage colours, um, and what shade of blue it was, all seems to be uh, up for debate still. All I'm going to say is that I like the dark Mediterranean blue suggestion which comes with this kit and that's the one I'm going to go for. So opening the box and straight away we can see some lovely detail on the two fuselage halves. These were in plastic bags but I removed them before I recorded. Our very nicely moulded upper and lower wing surfaces. Including some detail there in the wheel wells various ailerons, elevators and um, rudders and you'll see there's lots of options there, I'll come back to those later. And one more spear of various parts including the undercarriage and the propeller. Being a weekend edition there's no photo etch in this kit. And of course the clear parts which are moulded in this uh, typical for now for Edouard circular um, pattern. Finally we have some very innocent looking decal sheets which caused me a huge amount of hassle later on in the build. I was a little bit suspicious even looking at them here. You can see the, the colour is just a little ununiform. It looks almost like they're old decals or they've been spoiled or not stored properly. But this is a brand new kit, this was released in 2021. And we have two sheets of those, one for the markings and one for the stencils. Instructions are typical for Edward. They're reasonably clear. There's a reasonable number of parts put on in each step, so it's not too confusing. And when one part is painted in multiple colours, they use shading to help you understand what goes where. As you would expect, the construction follows a fairly predictable path. Here you can see a closer view of those four colour schemes I mentioned earlier. This is one of those aircraft where I like all of the colour schemes. I like the uh, temperate land scheme of the early Spitfires, the temperate sea scheme, um, the tropical scheme and the, the Mediterranean scheme. I have done a Spitfire in tropical colours a long, long time ago, before I had a YouTube channel. I might repaint that actually, but I also might just build another Spitfire. And actually I have the Spitfire uh, Mark I from Tamiya in the stash as well. So starting with the cockpit build, and Edward uses this interesting uh, technique here where we have this inner panel for the cockpit which the detail goes onto, and then this goes into the fuselage side. I was a bit sceptical about this, I thought it would make the fuselage sides too thick, or it would just uh, not fit very well, but actually it worked really well in the end and uh, you couldn't tell that was how it was done. I imagine the reason they've done this is so they can uh, change pieces quite easily for different variants of the Spitfire. I built up as much as I could before applying any paint. I much prefer to apply the overall colour, like the interior green, and then pick out the details, rather than trying to paint pieces first and glue them with very, very small contact areas, um, which might be tarnished by paint as well.
The two halves of the elevators went together perfectly, with no seam visible and no sanding required. The sprue includes different versions of the elevators and the rudder, although the versions in this kit only require the one version. Here's the cockpit after applying some of Tamiya's XF-71. And looking at this, even though there's no photo etch, it's quite hard for me to imagine what the uh, Profipack versions with, with photo etch actually add because there's a great amount of detail in here. And this is, this is really good enough for me. The rear part of the fuselage needs to be painted in aluminium. And I'm using the Vallejo metal colors to do that. I've only just got these, but so far they've been the best metal paints that I've used. Um, I haven't airbrushed them yet, but they brush really, really well. Um, they seem quite thick, but apparently you can airbrush them straight from the bottle. I'll be finding that out soon on my uh, natural metal finish B17. But certainly here, I was really happy with the way they went down. Once that was done, it was a case of picking out the details in the cockpit. I also used a small amount of a dark oil paint, thinned with enamel thinners, to provide some of the shadows in the cockpit. You can tell the fit of the parts here by how well these wingtips slot into place. I wasn't sure about the seam line on the nose. I know it's not there in older Spitfires, but I'm sure I read somewhere and I'm sure I saw a couple of references that suggested it was there on the later models. So I did leave it in place. However, I did fill and sand the seam line closer to the cockpit. And to fill the couple of minor gaps that I've made, um, I use this AK modeling putty. It's water soluble, and I generally find it easier to mix it with a bit of water to thin it down and just let it run into the gaps. It does tend to take a couple of applications and you have to be sure it's properly dry before you sand it, otherwise it just all pours out in one go. A cocktail stick is also an effective tool for applying it. Once I thought I was happy with the sanding and the filling, I gave the whole aircraft a coat of NATO Black XF69. But as you can see, the seam is still visible there, so I had to go back into a bit more filling and a bit more sanding. The underside of the aircraft was painted in a medium sea grey. Mixing the dark Mediterranean blue was not easy. I started with the Tamiya XF8, which is a regular blue, and I added quite a lot of grey to try to lighten it. However, I think it's still a little bit too dark, and of course it got darker because I applied the gloss coat. At this stage I started to have problems with the decals. Normally I use Tamiya Mark Fit uh, to soften the decals, I tried that. I also tried uh, Vallejo decal softener, which is really nice, uh, but neither of them really seemed to have an effect on these decals. This is more than 24 hours after the application, so the decals are definitely dried. But you can see the, the film is quite glossy, which um, 
Okay, maybe I could get rid of that with a, a varnish coat. But also it's very thick as well. And there's also on the top side of the, even with the walkway lines, the black lines, quite a lot of silvering in the decals, even though I use the softeners, even though it's only a small decal. But by far the worst was the roundels. This is again after more than 24 hours after application. Okay, there's a small wrinkle there, which is my fault. But just look at the colour, that blue there, it's awful. It's sort of, um, it's, I don't know what it is, it's just got, almost got like white mottling all over it, it's absolutely terrible. The underwing ones weren't quite as bad, but they still weren't good. And I, I just decided that I wouldn't be happy with this, so I had to take them off. Now strangely, when I took them off, they came off in almost one piece as if they hadn't even taken to the uh, paint surface, as if they were somehow uh, only stuck at the edges. It's very strange, I've never had that problem with decals before. Looking this up online, it seems that Edouard have changed their decals recently, sometime either during late 2020 or in 2021, and a lot of people have been complaining about them. There are a few techniques you can use apparently to sort of peel off that um, the top layer of the decal, but I mean, I tried that actually, and it didn't really work for me. But I just wasn't happy with them. I do have some spare decals somewhere in the stash, in my shipping when it arrives. So knowing that, I decided just to strip these decals that I put on. Possibly even take the opportunity to sand it back and change the colour to a lighter blue colour. And then reapply the spare decals. Ironically, some of those decals are Edouard decals, but I know they're much better than these ones here. Okay, so fast forward a couple of weeks and my shipping arrived. I unpacked it and I was able to find these older Edward decals and this is exactly what I'm looking for. This has the fin flashes and the roundels of various types. Combined with that, I found these code letters from uh, another kit I've made. I'm not sure what these are from exactly. I know the original kit decals had um, yellow letters but I'm not really too fussed about that. Um, I could pay 10, 11 pounds for a new set of decals which had yellow letters in them, but to be honest, I'd, I'd rather just use uh, one of these. I know the code letters are not the same either and the serial numbers won't be the same, but to me, um, that's not such a major issue. I don't mind a little bit of historical inaccuracy in this situation. And to be honest, I'd rather save my money for a kit rather than just a set of decals. In the meantime, I've taken the opportunity to clean up the old decals and to give the kit a new coat of paint. This is XF8 um, flat blue with rather a large amount of uh, neutral grey in it. This is lighter than the first colour, but I'm remembering that once I give it a gloss coat, it will darken quite considerably. And as you can see here, these decals went down a treat. A little bit of Tamiya Mark Fit, and there are no problems whatsoever with those. That's exactly how decals should go. Why Edward would change from this to the things we had a look at previously, I have no idea. One thing I did spend some money on was this set of Spitfire stencil decals. I figured without the stencils, the kit just wouldn't look as good. Um, as you can see, these are from Barracuda Cowls, 148 scale. This is a comprehensive set, and they went down very nicely again. If you've watched my channel before, you'll know that I don't like to put a huge amount of weathering on my models, but I did use this Abtai Lung Sepia Oil Paint to create a pin wash. I left it on some card at first to absorb the oil, thinned it with some white spirit, then applied it to the various panel lines, hatches, and so on. The mixture is a bit too thick here, to be honest, it doesn't flow perfectly. The very small rivet detail on the uh, leading edge of the wings is a bit too fine, especially after the various coats of paints and varnishes to take the pin wash. Once I'd left it to dry for about 15 minutes, 
I use a dry paper towel to wipe it off, going in the direction of the airflow. For the more stubborn parts which I wanted to remove, I dampened the paper towel with some white spirit. To show some wear on the wing for the pilot going in and out of the cockpit, I used some silver paint. Again, I'm still going quite lightly on this. I used a piece of sponge to dab on some XF69 NATO black to provide some colour variation on the propeller. And then once all that was dry, I still wasn't really happy with the way the aircraft looked. It still looked a little bit clean. I seemed to struggle with weathering on aircraft and particularly for desert aircraft. So I made this wash of a sandy coloured oil paint, spread it all across the surfaces and used the same technique as before to remove it with a paper towel but trying to remove a bit less this time to leave a bit of residue on the wing. This was the final result. It needs tidying up a bit on the leading edge of the wing. It's a little bit better and it adds some streaks, but I think that's definitely one technique that I still need to, uh, to practice some more. Before I show you the final result, let me take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone for watching. And in particular to my Patreon supporters who support this channel every month. And that help is greatly appreciated. It really does help to keep the channel running. But also it's great to have a little bit of a community on the Patreon page. And uh, there's quite a lot of activity there from people commenting. And, uh, having discussions about various modelling techniques and so on. Which is something I really enjoy. So thank you guys for being part of that. Okay, well that was the long and slightly windy road to my Malta Spitfire. The uh, Edward weekend kit certainly turned into a bit more of a uh, few months long kit. As I said already in this video, I had great fun building it. I really enjoyed painting it as well. It was just those awful, awful decals, which to be honest, have made me think twice about buying another uh, Edward kit. I need to do a bit more research to see if it's just I've been unlucky with this kit or if a lot of people are having issues with this um, or what exactly is going on. Maybe there's a technique I don't know for making these decals apply nicely but um, otherwise I'd be a bit reluctant unfortunately to, to buy another kit. In terms of the final result I'm not sure how much I like it. The aircraft definitely looked too uniform before I did any of the uh, oil weathering but I think I need to practice that a bit more still because the streaking is, it's okay, but it's, I don't know, it's just, I'm not quite happy with it. Uh, so I need to practice that a bit more in the future, I think. Anyway, guys, as I said before, this has been my first video in a while, but I do have a number of projects in the pipeline. Here's a quick sneak preview of them now. So if you'd like to see any of those projects come into fruition, then please remember to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video, then feel free to hit the like button or to leave a comment below. And until next time, have fun modelling. Thanks for watching, guys.